Hey there, watch enthusiasts. Welcome back to The Steady Ticker. I'm Joe, one of your go-to friends when it comes to all things about luxury watches. And with me is... Joel, your other go-to friend who's also passionate about luxury watches. Today we're diving deep in exploring a topic that's intrigued watch enthusiasts for over a century. How do watches glow in the dark? Well, that's really intriguing. If you've ever wondered about the magic behind those luminous watch hands and dials, you're in for a treat. We're revealing the secrets of luminescent materials, and we'll be shining light on some of the most iconic watch brands and their contributions to this technology. We'll journey through time, starting from the early days when watchmakers first experimented with radioactive radium, uncovering its dark and dangerous history. Then we'll reveal the safer alternatives that emerged, such as tritium and superluminova, and how they transformed the watch industry. We'll also put these luminescent materials to the test, comparing how different types of watches perform in low light conditions. Ever wondered which watch material glows the brightest or lasts the longest? Stay tuned to find out. All right, let's get started by debunking one of the most common terms in the world of watches, loom. Now, if you're new to the world of horology, you might be wondering what exactly loom is. For everyone's information, loom is a term that gets thrown around a lot in the watch community, and it's simply the short form of luminescent material. This material is most often in the form of paint applied to the watch's dials and hands. But why do watchmakers go through all this trouble to put loom on their watches, you may ask? Well, it all comes down to enhancing the watch's legibility, especially in conditions where light is scarce, like at night or even underwater. And it's not just about aesthetics. You see, back in the day, when people started venturing into the depths of the ocean or working in low-light environments, it became crucial to have a way to read the time on their watches when traditional hands and markers just wouldn't cut it. That's true. The application of luminescent material was a game changer, and it's been an integral part of watchmaking for a long time. It's not just about style, it's also about practicality and functionality. But there's a lot more to this story. The history of loom is a fascinating one, and it's evolved over the years. The story begins in the early 1900s, when watchmakers first ventured into the world of luminescence. Their experimentation led them to a material called radium. Now, radium had a unique quality. It could emit a self-illuminating, bright, and long-lasting glow. But there was a dark side to this bright discovery. Radium was in fact radioactive. In the decades that followed, it was found to have a fatal flaw, causing serious harm to the wearer and those working on the watches. As radium aged, it produced radon gas, a cancer-causing agent. An example of the devastating consequences of radium exposure was the tragic story of the radium girls in the early 1900s. Now, these women worked in factories, applying radium paint to watch dials, and many of them lost their lives due to negligent instructions that led to ingesting this dangerous material. As the watch industry recognized the dangers of radium, it started seeking safer alternatives. This led to the emergence of materials like promethium and tritium. Promethium, while still radioactive, was less so than radium. However, it had a shorter half-life of 2.62 years, making it less viable for watch dials. Indeed, it wasn't until the 1960s that the industry found a new standard in tritium, a radioactive isotope of hydrogen. Tritium offered a respectable glowing lifespan of 12.32 years and had a much lower radioactive signature compared to its predecessors. If you've ever seen an older watch from the 1960s onwards, particularly vintage Rolex models, you might have noticed the faded tan color of the luminescent material. That's actually tritium paint, and it's considered one of the most sought-after patinas in the watch market. It's worth noting that tritium-based paints on dials were commonly used until 1998 when the industry transitioned to tritium gas tubes. And the story doesn't end there. The immediate successors to tritium were Luminova and later Super Luminova, which were deployed in Japan in the early 1990s, just in time to fill the void left by tritium's exit from the market. These new materials were groundbreaking because they offered a glow without the need to be charged by a light source. Unlike radium and tritium, which require exposure to light to glow in the dark, Super Luminova operates more like a battery. It absorbs light energy and then emits a glow afterwards. The move to superluminova marked a significant shift in the watch industry towards non-radioactive luminescent materials. This was a critical moment in watchmaking, ensuring safer and more long-lasting luminescence on watch dials. But before we dive into more of the details of such luminescent materials and how they affect the glow of your favorite timepieces, we'd like to hear from you. Are you a fan of watches with luminescent dials? What's your favorite watch in low-light conditions? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and let's keep the conversation going. 
Your insights and experiences make this geeking out on watchmaking all the more engaging, so don't hesitate to join me in. Now let's move on and explore the different luminescent materials that make your watch shine in the dark. Alright, let's shine some light on what makes these luminescent materials truly special. It's not just about what they're made of, but how they work their magic to make your watch glow. I agree, Joe. Additionally, luminescent materials operate based on a simple principle. They absorb and store light energy when exposed to a light source, and then they release that energy in the form of a visible glow in low light conditions. And the longer these materials can store that light energy, the longer they'll keep glowing. So that's where we see differences in them. Take Luminova and Superluminova, for example. They're known for their efficiency in absorbing and storing light energy. They're like little energy banks on your watch. On the other hand, we have Seiko's LumiBright. It's widely recognized for its charging speed. In as little as a couple of minutes in bright light, it's all set to provide that unmistakable Seiko glow. And then there's Rolex Chroma Light, a whole different story. It's famous for its striking neon blue glow. While Rolex keeps the exact competition close to its chest, it's clear that Chroma Light is all about creating a distinctive and stylish luminescence. So it's not just about the glow itself, but how these materials charge and retain that energy. The duration and intensity of the glow vary between them, giving each watch a unique character. These differences add another layer to the personality of your watch, and it's part of what makes watch collecting so interesting. And we now reach the end of this video, fellow watch enthusiasts. We've truly had an illuminating journey through the world of luminescent materials in watches. We explored the history of these materials, from the radioactive essence of radium to the safer alternatives that followed. It's a story of progress, safety, and ingenuity in the watchmaking world. We compared some of the most common luminescent materials as well, from Luminova to Super Luminova, Seiko Lumibrite and Rolex Chromalite. We witnessed their unique glow and how they charge in different ways, adding character to your timepieces. We also touched upon the intriguing practices of watch brands like Seiko and Rolex, where Lumibrite and Chromalite are the stars of the show. The mystery surrounding these proprietary formulas only adds to the enchantment of horology. Your insights and comments make this journey all the more engaging and we appreciate your contributions to our watch community. Whether you're a seasoned collector or just starting your watch journey, remember that the world of luminescent materials is not just about aesthetics, but also practicality. It's about enhancing legibility in low light conditions and adding a touch of magic to your watch. So as we conclude this video, we want to hear from you once again. Which luminescent material do you prefer? And do you have a watch with a glow that captures your heart? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Stay curious, keep exploring, and enjoy the timeless magic of watches. Stay ticking, watch enthusiasts. Want to hear more about watches? Hit that subscribe button below to support the Steady Ticker channel and click the notification bell to instantly know about our new videos on luxury watches. See you in the next one.